Hey guys, on a little bit early today. Take these off, I don't know if I need them yet. We'll see. Um, so yeah, I'm sure there's not really anyone on there yet. Um, well, I don't know what time it is. I think it's about five two, is it? Got tea anyway today very happy about that dad made me a cup of tea before and we are jasmine free which is also really nice um sounds awful that but you know we can just hello stephanie um we can also just um yeah look after ourselves this weekend which is really important i think just to have a bit of a break um and the door is opened to the kitchen and i can hear the birds hello um, from Turkey, I don't know how to pronounce your name, I disagree. Um, and Latasha from North Carolina, I tell you it's all the, all the people far away that are tuned in already. Um, I guess you can hear the birds and the sun shining and yeah, feeling very positive today. Hi, it's Kim from Bristol again, hello. Hi, is it Daisy from Islington? Oh, in Islington, how's my shop? Um, hey, Susan from Montana, Anne from Australia, Anne from Aberdeen, hey again. Oh, who else have we got? Oh, we've got Deborah from South Africa. Oh, hi. <laughs> um, so yeah, Poppy is down on there on the little uh, cushion. Um, Mum and Dad are having some quiet time. They've just been through a, a big walk. Um, and I had the most luxurious morning. Oh my goodness, I got up at nine. <laughs> so nice. I tell you, small pleasures, guys. Got up at nine and then Dad made a full English breakfast. So uh, if those of you um, who aren't from uh, the UK, full English. Well, it wasn't quite full English, but it was close to full English. It was bacon, mushrooms, tomatoes, and fried egg toast. Oh, it was so good. Um, and it was really nice because that sort of set the day. I mean, obviously it was different because Jasmine wasn't here, but I think we sort of said, let's do a special breakfast at the weekends because it makes the weekend feel a bit different from the week, which is important at the moment. Hello, Aurelie from France. Nice to see some familiar names up there. Um, and uh, yes, so, and then after that, I had a bath for an hour. Oh, luxurious bath at 10 o'clock. So nice. I tell you. Hello, Eileen. Oh, Pennines. From the other side of the Pennines. <laughs> um, yeah, so I uh, had a lovely long bath. Felt really lovely. And then spent uh, a while just getting ready, which is such a luxury, just to spend time getting ready. And then this afternoon, I'm going to do some sewing in preparation for next week's sew-alongs. But I'm going to do it whilst watching some Netflix and then tonight we're having a family quiz on zoom um so my sister and her, her partner are going to be uh, joining us hello um and tammy julia hello um and yeah so i'm looking forward to that that will be really nice so yeah nice weekend and then tomorrow i've got um a nice little uh tea and a chat at two o'clock with uh on the lisa comfort home so long and um i have also got cleaning oh it's big cleaning tomorrow so because jasmine won't be back until late afternoon we're gonna do our cleaning so uh me mum and dad will be cleaning the house um and uh yeah i don't know i'm quite looking forward to that this is sad state of affairs isn't it but yeah, and I'm also going to go for a big run tomorrow. So um, I want to try and do a 12 mile run tomorrow. So we'll see how I feel. I wanted to have a nice lazy day today and not feel like I needed to push myself. But tomorrow, uh, yeah, the weather should be nice. And in the morning, I'm going to get up and do a nice big run. And then I think we're getting uh, Sunday lunch delivered from the pub. Um, they're dropping off on our doorstep, which would be very nice. I've already had that once. It was great. Oh, hello, Amanda. So, guys, we are actually not on our own because after, um, in our last session, I was like, oh, we're not going to get this finished. We have, you know, we all agreed together that we do this session today. But I didn't want to expect anyone from so over it to, um, 
oh here's Rosie, um, to, to do it. But Rosie very kindly said, Lisa, of course I will do it. It's just an hour. I will do it on Saturday. So thank you so much, Rosie. And I'm sure everyone will be very grateful to have you there answering our questions again. Our questions, yeah, because there'll probably be some from me as well. Right, let's get started. Mm. So, as always, guys, uh, in the description box below. Hello, Lorianne. <laughs> um, uh, in the description box, you can buy us a coffee and donate to this video and support us. Um, if you're watching this and you haven't seen the other ones, there are two other parts to this. So we are making uh, the Betty dress together and there's part one and two to follow. Um, and if you want to get hands on the Betty dress, there is a link to it in the description box below as well. Right, so where did we get up to? Well, we were doing our understitching, weren't we? So we all should have understitched our seam allowance um, to the lining. So understitching from the lining or the facing side as far as you can. And you may have found that you just couldn't get up that far in some sections and that's fine. So you can see mine there. Oops, if I pull that out, it'll help you sort of see. There's my understitching here. Um, and yeah, it does, it does stop there, so you can't get up there, but that's fine. So whether you're doing lining, fully lining the bodice like me, or you're doing uh, the facings, all of these stages are the same. So what we're going to do now is we are going to join the shoulder seams. So make sure you've got a front shoulder, um, and a back shoulder. <laughs> the last thing we want to be doing is joining two front shoulders and two backs because that's not going to be a wearable garment. So it's quite, yeah, it's important to check that because it sounds silly, but it could be quite easy to do that. So I'm going to take um, the two there and I'm going to place them first. So with the outer fabric, obviously it's the same, but I'm going to place it first with those right sides together. So can you see that there? like that and pop some pins in so I can maybe show you a little bit more clearly. Um, I'm just lining up the shoulder seam edges. Oops, that's a bent pin. There we go. So it's like that. Now I'm going to stitch that with a centimetre and a half seam allowance. Um, and then I'm going to do the other one. Try not to move that so that it's you can still see what I'm doing. I don't think we're going to see Coco today. She is asleep on uh, the, whoops, on the uh, my bed upstairs, having a little peaceful time now that she knows Jasmine's not around. Oh, the cat finds them really relaxing. That's nice. Probably likes hearing the sound the sewing machine. Um, So reversing at the start and at the end. Okay, so there it is stitched and um, I'll cut the threads off in a second. What I'm gonna do now is take the same shoulder seam but of the lining or facing if you're doing facing and do the same with that, right sides together. So it looks a bit like, it looks a bit like that. So it's gonna sort of look wrong, but it's right. And we're gonna stitch that together. I keep picking up that bent pin. I need to put that, throw that away. Just your annoying pin there. Um, I'm also, whilst I'm doing that, I'm just going to switch Mr. Iron or Bob. Ouch! Oh gosh, just whack my knee, ow, on the table leg. Oh, oh, that really hurt. Oops. I tell you, I am covered in bruises. I walk into things all the time, like literally all the time. I just, I don't know. I was at the beautician's and uh, a couple of months ago and she's like, oh my God, Lisa, do you have an accident? And I was like, no. She's like, you've got bruises all over your legs. I'm like, oh, I'll walk into stuff all the time. I don't know why. I think I've got one of those, well, I don't think I have a, like a, a disability at all, but you know, I just definitely, spatial awareness issues with my body. <laughs> just seem to miss things and walk into them. Um, so we are reversing at the beginning and at the end. There we go. Right, we should cut our little threadies off. Oops, a daisy. And then we're going to press these seam allowances open with the iron so that they're nice and flat. How am I going to do this so you guys can, you can kind of see there, can't you? Ish. Can you see? Let's just move that a bit. It's a bit in the way. Hey. 
Okay, iron. What are you doing? I forgot to turn you up. It's gone. Okay. My mum loves this fabric. She's like, oh, Lisa, it's gorgeous. So I was like, mum, I might have some left. Do you want me to make you something? I feel like you deserve something, mum, for putting us up. She's having to think about what she wants. I think maybe a skirt or something. Ooh. Oh, yeah. My mum does very well, though, because that, obviously I make a lot of things. And my mum's a similar size to me. Um, so she gets a lot of things anyway. And interestingly, Nicole had, uh, so our next pattern for our PDF club release, um, Nicole has been making the samples. She's made some beautiful samples, um, Nicole and Julie. Um, but the Nicole samples arrived in the post the other day because basically, guys, I'm going to have to try with my dad to do a photo shoot for that pattern because we haven't photographed it. Um, so that'll be interesting. Um, but um, yes, anyway, so the, they came up and mum was like, oh, Oh my goodness, they love it. Can I have that one? And I was like, I'm really sorry, Mum. No, you can't. She's like, oh, um, I was like, maybe I'll make you one though, Mum. Maybe I'll make you one. It's quite a, it's a bit more of an involved pattern. So it depends how much energy I have left. <laughs> and at the moment, there's not much energy left going. Um, so it might not be something that I'll make up. We'll see. Okay, so let's have a look now. So I've just done that. Press those open. And you can see now it it's now uh that's now joined the armhole but we have to do that little gap there but we'll do that in a bit um we'll go and do the other side first so exactly the same thing we're going to just place shoulder seams together and line up those edges there And pop the middle. Oh, bend the pin again. Very annoying. Okay, let's do that one. Ooh, ah. uh Is there a problem with things not being very clear, guys? I've just realised, I don't know if I connected to the right Wi-Fi. I might have connected to the the booster Wi-Fi. But has everyone, if everyone see me as clearly as normal? Good. Polly says yes. Good. Good. Thanks, guys. Fab. I bought a, uh, uh, I ordered a extension um, for mum and dad's uh, like a Wi-Fi booster because when we're in my room where I'm doing kind of my office -y work, um, the internet's really bad. So, um, but you have to make sure that you have to keep hopping between the different um, connections. <clears throat> we So, ah. Oh. Thanks guys, I'm glad I'm coming in loud and clear. <clears throat> do, do, do. So, a job this weekend is for me to get the old uh, online shop run. Ooh, earrings. I think these were from Accessorize or somewhere about a long time ago. Sorry. Um, yeah, so to get the online shop going. So, um, as we were mentioning the other day, uh, Rosie has got the coffee shop printer at her flat. She's very kindly going to be doing that. And <coughs> I have got um, everything else. So our physical patterns that we sell in there, like nice packaging, like this version, like that. And the Poppy and Jazz ones. And I've also got some Lisa Comfort fabric and some of the other fabrics that we um, had left over uh, from the Audrey top and stuff. And so, yeah, my job today, as well as so, <laughs> of course, it's still really busy, is to get it up and running and find a place in the house where I can... Uh, process orders easily so mum's slightly worried about that and uh, I think my parents are losing <laughs> some like we needed to obviously order extra 
packaging and stuff for me for posting and uh, it keeps all coming and arriving and my mum's like literally Lisa I don't think we'll be able to get out of the house soon there's so many packages on the doorstep I wish they were exciting packages but they're not they're jiffy bags and envelopes and labels but yeah hoping to get going and we're hoping that we'll be able to uh, launch our online shop again um, on Monday but watch this space we will be telling you about it um, obviously on Monday's live I'll, I'll mention it and then also on uh, also on um, like we'll email you as well Oh, there's some chat going on about our sewing machines. Our sewing machines at the moment are on offer, guys. Um, and because they get dispatched straight from Janome, um, you can get your hands on one. Um, they'll get them straight to your door. Really lovely sewing machines to work with. Um, we've taught with them for years. Right, guys, what we're going to do now is we have got to close these little gaps here. So I am going to put, this is a bit awkward, I'm going to try and show you what I'm doing right here. I'm going to put that in like that and pull it through. So you basically have to pull the sleeve, or well, the, not the sleeve, is it? What is it? The shoulder bit. You need to pull it through and you need all of the bit that's not stitched so you can sew that up. Why am I not winning here? Why am I not winning? Uh, that's it. So I need to know that I've got a good enough section there. So you can see it's open there, but I've also got it stitched there and there so I can get in there. And then what we're gonna do is line up those seams. Right sides together. Um, and then just pin that little bit closed. What's happening there? Oh, I see. That's not actually, it's like, oh, it looks stitched. It's not, it's just where I've stitched the stay tape on. Oh. Sorry, sometimes you need to kind of almost make your hands a bit moist so that you can like move the fabric a bit better, slide it along. So I've pinned that bit there. And now I'm going to sew that. It's important when you're pinning and sewing that you're not accident, you're not catching the uh, the other si side of the um, strap inside. Just make sure that that's pinned out the way as you're doing it. Okay, and it's yeah. Take that a little bit slowly. So I've overlapped where I was. Um, and. I've overlapped where I was and um, I've reversed as well. Remembering your seam allowance along the neckline is centimetre. Oops. And then at the end, I've overlapped where the existing stitching was and also. <clears throat> let's trim that down. And also <clears throat> reversed. So then we can trim those threads off. Um, where are they? There. And there. And then, and trim that off there. Like that. So that's one side of the, the strap done. And now I'm going to do the other side. So, pulling it so that I can get... Hmm. Section strength, there we go. Push that side, so that's what I meant. You need to push that out the way. So you don't want to catch that when you're sewing. <clears throat> and then line up those shoulder seams first, making sure those seams stay open. I think actually I need a bit more up there. That's no good. I haven't got it all out. It's harder this side because it's you can't push the strap out the other side because it's closed now on that side so it is a bit fiddlier and you do need to be careful that you don't accidentally catch it. Okay. So 
find that if you put your pins in horizontally, that pin stops the fabric from, from inside getting anywhere close, better than doing them parallel. The pin then sort of protects the whole area that you're gonna sew. Um, we do have uh, this technique on our stitch school, all in one, sewing an all in one facing. It's um, exactly the same whether you're doing it the full lining or, or the facing. Um, so obviously on our stitch school, you've got much better angles to see what I'm doing. Um, <clears throat> so our stitch school is our online learning platform, which you can sign up to if you're liking these sew alongs and you feel like you're learning something, you'll learn a hell lot, whole, I nearly said hell and oh, a whole lot more, sorry guys, um, on uh, our stitch school. £5 a month or £15 a month for access everything. I'm sure Rosie will link to it shortly. You can have a look at it. Normally it's a three month sign up, but now you only have to sign up for a month. So you can test it out. There's no commitment beyond a month. And for five pounds, I think it's pretty good. The amount of content you get and also loads of patterns and stuff. Ta -da. Overlapping again. Now this is the very exciting bit because you pull it through and hopefully you haven't messed it up. <laughs> you pull it through and like magic, it's all finished. Obviously I know it needs pressing, but now that seam is continuously sewn as is the neckline, as is the shoulders. So that is a wonderful technique, I think. I really do find that very satisfying to do. So I'm now going to do the same on the other side, exactly the same. Um, and then we'll give it a nice press um, along the bodice. And then I'm going to do a bit of hand sewing and then I'll talk you through the hem. Oof. So, pinning this bit. Oh, now like it's actually a bit cold. Dad's left that door open, which is nice to hear the birds, but actually it's a bit cold. I am wearing a summer dress here, Dad. And I didn't have a white vest to wear underneath today, so I am a bit chilly, even with my Lisa Comfort cardigan. I've got those as well, guys. My Lisa Comfort cardigans, they've sent those up as well, so um, I'm going to make sure that those are up online once I get going. Um, so yeah, there'll be fabrics, the Lisa Comfort Cardies, the patterns. We won't have haberdashery, so we won't have threads. Um, and I don't, we don't have zips either, I'm afraid. Although, I did grab a massive bag of zips. Shout me out, please. <laughs> okay, we're getting some weird comments. Right, okay. Let's now stitch. Uh, this bit. Ooh, I should have pulled out a little bit more there. It's uh, it's a little bit um, tricky at that point. I should have pulled a little bit. I'm very close to where the ton of top of the fabric disappears back in and where I need to start sewing. So I not made things easy for myself there. Say guys I'm very excited about sewing the Clara top next week because I, I, um, I've I never made it I don't think I'm trying to remember if I've ever made any no I have made one no I've made one yeah but it was a long time ago I've made one but a long time ago so I am excited to, to uh, be making a one again it's hot I mean I don't make all of our patterns anymore because there's just so many um, but uh, yeah, so it's nice that now this, I'm going to get time to sew things that maybe I haven't sewn yet, which is great. I'm trying to think what else. I mean, the things actually now I'm doing after the uh, Clara, I am going to be doing uh, the Ultimate Trousers and I've definitely made lots of those. But I haven't actually made um, any in a while. So but I've also brought all of my uh, work in progress or unfinished projects with me and I really really want to just get through those um, 
So I've got lots of like, I've got a, an ivy skirt um, that I wanted to shorten. Um, I've got an Ava skirt that I need to finish in time for Tuesday's uh, sew along. And I've also got, um, oops, what else have I got? I've got a jumpsuit, I can't remember the name of it. I think it's the Scirocco jumpsuit. Someone else's pattern, not ours, um, that I started ages ago, like last summer. Still haven't finished that because I sort of started it, didn't get a chance to finish it, and then it became, whoops, it became winter and it wasn't really suitable. But anyway, so I've got to finish that. Yeah, I'm excited about, I love that because there's lots of things in my basket of unfinished things that are kind of not far from being finished. So there'll be nice, quick, satisfying uh, projects. So I'm going to try and do a little bit of those this weekend as well. Because um, then I'll get a few new clothes to wear inside the house. Hey. Oops. I think it's really important to still dress nicely in this period because it helps us feel like, you know, I think if I was in tracky bottoms or pyjamas every day, I don't think it'd be very good for me. You know, it's nice to feel that I get ready and it's the day and that's a different thing. <laughs> okay. We're done on both rows. Oh, we can do some ironing now. A little bit of ironing to get this all looking nice. I might put the uh, sewing machine on the floor. Because I'm going to we've got a bit of space to us to see. Oh, sorry, Mum. Can you push this pull this over? There we go. A bit more in shot, isn't it, there? And I can still stay seated. Oh, pins flying everywhere. Right. So now, um, so I've forgotten, I've, I haven't put my extra lamp on. I hope you can see, you can see me all right. The light's still okay. The sun's just gone in, so it's a bit darker. So now what we're going to do is we're going to press all of this. Um, now I am going to press it from the lining side so that if I don't damage the outside. Can you see what I'm doing there? Mm, maybe a little bit. So what I'm going to do is get the seam right on the edge and then just slightly roll up the outer seam so that it's kind of coming into the inside so I've got the uh, lining here on the, on the top there and I'm allowing that seam just to roll over and that means that the seam line won't then be seen from the outside and the lining won't be seen either and obviously it doesn't matter because the lining's the same fabric but oh what has happened there look I've caught something I've caught something what did I do let's have a look I think I might have just caught a seam allowance. Yes. Right, we need to unpick that quickly. Seam allowance got caught in. There we go. Annoyingly though, I'm gonna have to go back and uh, stitch that, aren't I? Because <sighs> I unpicked it, gotta go back and stitch it. Oi! Right, take two ticks though, guys. Just that little bit, yeah, it caught the uh, seam allowance. So it's, it felt like there was nothing in the way there, but you can see it's very easy to do that. So that little bit again. So if you've got a little bit like that, you have to unpick, overlap, reverse, come to the other side, overlap, reverse. Oh, those are muscles. Ouch, ouch, ouch. Mum and I are going to do some uh, bit of weightlifting today with our little three, two and three um, kilo weights. Bodybuilders that we are. Oh, we have also were meant to be doing some of the Joe Wicks with uh, Jasmine, which is, um, he's a bit of a, a zeitgeist here in the, uh, not a zeitgeist, that's the wrong term, but yeah, everyone's obsessed with him. He's doing a P lesson every morning. Um, um, he's a kind of fitness trainer person. You can kind of do all these um, intense workout, hit workouts, he calls them. 
Um, and but yeah, he's doing PE lessons for children every morning, and we were going to do them with Jazzy, but we haven't really worked a way into getting that into our schedule. Um, but I have found actually one thing that I've been loving is um, I think it's called Cosmic Cosmic Yoga um, on YouTube, and it's yoga for children. And Jazz does a bit of yoga at her nursery, so uh, we did a little bit together, and it's so sweet. So, like, she does little downward dog. She's also trying to do, I think she calls it mountain pose or tree pose. It looks like tree pose to me, but I think she calls it mountain pose. But, yeah, where she stands on one leg and puts her little other leg up like that. Oh, so sweet. And hold, and then tries to put her hands in the air, and basically, this usually falls over. It's quite hard for balance for a little two-year-old to do that. Um, but, yeah, she loves showing you her yoga routine. It's one of her favourite things. Okay, just finishing this neckline now. Mm -mm. So, neckline is pressed, and you can see, I'll try and well, hope you can see it's looking a lot nicer and sharper. I'll probably press it again, but for now that's fine. Now I'm just going to do the armholes. I always give everything a final press anyway at the end of a project and really get it beautiful. But uh, for now we just need to give it a good enough press so that we can finish uh, the bottom of the lining. I've got to sort my nails out as well this weekend. I've got like a home a shellac kit but this is SNS on my nails and it's amazing if you don't know about SNS and you're into shellac SNS is only some salons do it but it's harder so it's kind of it lasts longer and it doesn't like strengthen your nails it's much better for your nails than uh, shellac is it's kind of got vitamins or something in it I'm not quite sure the science behind it but uh, yeah it's harder to take off um, but I need to and my nails have got so long it's getting very hard to text. It's no good. I keep mistyping things as my nails are so long. Um, but yeah, so I'm going to try and, try and get them into a state where they look still okay. I think it's going to take me a while, but I thought I could sit down, watch a girly film, sort my nails out. That's another luxury as well. So I think when we come out of this, guys, we are really just going to really enjoy and appreciate the simple things, aren't we? You know, today I'm in such a lovely mood and it's because I've been able to have a bath and get ready for a nice amount of time. And just do simple things. It's not grand gestures. It's just, yeah, being kind to yourself. Um, and um, yeah, it's lovely. And doing, spending time doing something I love, which is sewing. Yeah. No, I wouldn't have this time. I am sort of, you know, always trying to see positives in this time and... One thing that is, is I've fallen back in love with sewing again. Um, because I think, you know, I've done this business for over 10 years now because it existed before I had the shop. I used to go and teach people in their homes how to sew. And so I basically sacrificed my hobby to run, do my business. You know, my hobby became my business. And inevitably, when that happens, you, you know, you do lose some of the passion in terms of, not passion, because I'm still very passionate about it, but you, it doesn't, you know, it's not in that sort of relaxing way, as it, it you know, it's not, I'm not being very articulate here, am I? It doesn't, it doesn't relax me in the way that it used to, because often I don't have time to sew for pleasure. But now I do, and it's just so lovely. I'm just so excited by it, it's great. So I'm very grateful for this current situation, because in that regard. Right. I wonder if, let's move you, oh no, let's pop you on the floor, Mr. Iron. Okay. What I want to do now, guys, is I'm going to pin, I can try and show you, I'm going to pin my lining. Now, I need to pin my lining to uh, down the centre back, um, and I also need to pin it to the waist seam here. So if you are doing the lining version, one thing I did um, ahead of today is I pressed up that bottom edge by a centimetre. Now I know the seam allowance is a centimetre and a half, but one thing you really don't want to do is, um, is have the lining too tight inside. And so if you 
um, press it up by a centimetre and a half and you slightly take too much, then there's the risk that your lining is slightly shorter than your um, outer fabric and you don't want that. You want a little bit of billow, not much, very, very small amount because you don't want too much excess, but you just want a little bit. Um, so yeah, fold that up by a centimetre um, and if you're doing the, uh, the facing, then you just need to fold back the um, centre back of your facing. Actually, I need to do that as well. Also by... By a centimetre and a half, I do that one because you're going to be attaching it to inside of the zip, so further away from the centre back seam. Because if you think about it, the centre back seam is there, and I'm going to suggest that you anchor the lining there because you don't want it to be catching into the uh, the zip when you're closing it. So just fold that back, and you can kind of use the guideline of where you folded it back anyway um, before you stitched the facing or the lining on around the neckline. Okay. Voila. Oops. Okay, so I am going to do the behind the zip first. Oh, I don't know how to do this so you guys can see it. It's going to be really hard for me to do it like that. I'm going to try though. Let's see if I can. The tongue's going to have to come out. <laughs> Eek. And it doesn't matter when you pin this, if you accidentally pin it to the outer uh, layer. I can't do it, guys. I'm sorry. Not that skilled. I'll do it like this. Maybe you can see it a little bit there. Um, but yeah, it doesn't matter if you pin it through there. Just make sure that when you're stitching it, you don't do that. Um, ideally, though, you want to not pin it through there and just catch it in the zip tape. Mm -hmm. There's a comment there I just saw flip up about uh, lining lining your um, lining in your same self fabric. We call this the self fabric, which is the outer fabric. Um, I didn't do it with this. This is an old pillowcase <laughs> that I've lined it because this is white, and if I lined it with this underneath, you would see um, you would see the pattern through. But on my yellow fabric, I checked, and you don't see it, so it's fine. You need to go away, Mr. Iron. Okay, I'm going to use the iron. ironing board. It's really good for pinning this, I think. Cause it sort of helps you get things flat. I do need to turn the whole of this dress inside out, though, and pull that skirt through. How are we doing for time? We're okay. Oof. I promised my parents it wouldn't be longer than an hour. I think they were like, what? There's another one today? I was like, sorry, guys. You just have to, you know, get, make yourself a coffee and have a bit of quiet time. Anyway, I don't think they really mind, but I am very grateful that they're allowing me to take over their living room to do this with you guys. So, I'm now on the waist seam. What I am doing is I'm, I'm going to pin a little bit and then I'm going to show you. I am pinning, ideally, you pin just up to the stitch line of the waist seam. However... I do not want to I'll show you. I do again, I don't want to risk I've got to stitch into the seam allowance, so you can't go beyond it. Can you see that there? If you were to put that folded edge over, then it'd be very hard for you to catch into seeing this um seam into this seam allowance. So if you can see I've just put the folded edge just above it. Because we're gonna do a slip stitch all the way around. Um, but I do love this stage because it's when everything comes together and looks lovely and neat and all these frayed edges that I have to say when I'm sewing and there's frayed edges it does bug me a little bit because I just think they look messy. It's like a tidy freak. I like things to look neat and tidy. Um, so yeah, it's a very satisfying stage. And obviously make sure that as you're lining up your lining, you are lining up the seams. So wherever the seams are in the lining, you're lining it up to the same point in the outer dress as well. If you're doing the facing, guys, all that you will have done is you would have overlocked the bottom edge of the facing and then you'd just be anchoring it with a little catch stitch to the side seams um, 
and then doing your slip stitch down that little bit just here. Um, but obviously you're not doing this section. But I, you know, it's a bit like with the ultimate trousers. I'd quite like to give you guys some extra stuff, some bits that are a bit different, because and also the bits that I choose to do. So that's why I thought it'd be nice. Let's give it a whirl and, and make the uh, Clara blouse into a simpler blouse and not do the cuffs. And also then it's more suitable for this time of year if you're in the Northern Hemisphere. And um, for, the, uh, for the ultimate trousers, you know, doing the thing that I always do, which is putting um, a waistband on. So yeah, I'm gonna try and, I might with the Ava skirt, actually, I was thinking, I might make the waistband a little bit bigger. So I do like a thick waistband. I might do that as a little change. Um, oh, I was meant to do that. Okay, I'm gonna stop at that point um, because, so I've done that all the way along there, but I'm just gonna, I was meant to do the center back, so I'm not gonna pin any, big, I'm gonna leave that open. It's much easier to do the center back at this point before the waist seam. Um, so I'll just do this centre back pinning. So a good pinning, a good few millimetres away from the teeth. We do not want to catch. It's nothing worse than when you're doing a zip up and it catches the lining. Ugh. Nothing worse. Right, let's fold that last little bit up on the waist. No poppy, shush. No poppy. She's growling. Okay, so that's now pinned, guys. So I am going to start doing some sewing. Now, I'm not going to sew all of this because um, you'll get bored. <laughs> but I'm going to sew some of it and try and show you or talk you through what I'm doing. Um, and then I'm going to talk about what we do at the hem. And I'm hoping I'll then finish it today. And whether I'll get a photograph up today on the Instagram, I don't know. If not, I'll try and put it up tomorrow so you can see it finished. So I don't think I'm going to be able to show you it finished, but maybe I can wear it in one of the videos next week. Um, because the Ava skirt, oh, never mind you, I need to wear the Ava skirt to show you that, although I would, would be sitting down most of the time, so you're not going to see it. Anyway, maybe I'll sneak it in and show you at the start of the Clara or something, because it's nice to see it on video, isn't it? So, just using, cutting some thread off the uh, sewing machine. So we're doing a single thread, so that means you're not tying the two ends together. Come on. Like that. And it's never a good idea to have too long a thread when you're uh, uh, hand sewing, because each time you pull the thread through the fabric, it does kind of take a top, like wear a little bit on the thread, and you'll find that eventually it just gets knotted. So, little knot, and I'm going to start. Let's come closer. That helps, doesn't it? I'm going to start here. So I'm going to go in. Sorry guys, I wonder if I can change that angle like that. Is that better? And then it's good for me as well. So I'm going to go in to the zip tape here and also to the fabric. And I'm just going to do a few little stitches, kind of like little over stitches in this on the same spot like that, just to anchor my thread. Then I'm going to take that first pin out. And then away we go. So we're going into the zip tape. And this finger here, you see that there, that's making sure that I don't come all the way through to the other side. And then moving along and then coming up and catching that. Okay, then I'm gonna hop over at exactly the same point, using this third finger to make sure I'm not coming all the way through. Move along, coming up and catching the lining. Popping over, moving along. I love hand sewing. I just think it's the most soothing thing, especially if you've got good light. 
I'm not a big fan of hand sewing in the evening. Now, can you see there, I've got an annoying loop. That does sometimes happen. Let's see if I can pull it out. There we go. I just pulled it out by pushing that like that. So essentially, you should be able to stitch this all... I see, look, come through. So this finger is also checking for that. I could feel that with that finger. Let's do that again. Not caught. Um, we can just do this in a continuous seam. So we come all the way down the centre back, along the waist and come back up. Okay, you get my drift, guys. Right, so I'm going to leave my needle like that. Put this back up and I'm going to show you about the hem. Put it back. Oh. Um, so yeah, that's going to be a lovely little bit of peace and quiet stitching that all the way along. So the hem, so I think I said at the end of the last session to do your overlocking or zigzagging along your hem. I might also show you about how to end close the zip as well if there's time. So then I've already ironed a lot of my hem because there's about four and a half meters of hem on this. So it is really quite a lot of fabric. But um, I wanted to do some with you because I remember when I used to teach this, I used to teach the full circle skirt in our intro to dressmaking. And it was a challenge for a lot of people doing this. And I, I'm afraid I have to stand up for this because I can't get the angle that I want. Um, there we go. Let's move you with me. Okay. So what I do is I get the skirt and I get a nice section. So like a nice curved section on the ironing board like that. And then I turn as I go. So this hand here, my right hand is turning it as I go. If you do it in little sections, you're not going to get a smooth, uh, smooth curve. So you do it like that. Give yourself a nice stretch of it so you can flatten it. Turn it. Turn it as you go. Like that. Another bit. And it does help if you have overlocked because the overlocking can help you with that narrow turning and use that as a guide. So let's show you what we're doing. Here we go, like that, okay? So I've actually, that's now finished for mine. So I'm going to now sew that for you guys. Let's turn you back. How sick of you watching me do that. <laughs> oh dear. Right, so if we're sewing it, and again, this is going to take a lot of thread. So I always say to people, make sure that you have got lots of bobbin in your bobbin hole, on your bobbin, but lots of thread, because it's very likely that you could run out. And I'm going to start at the centre back. I'm also going to work from the right side. I'm not going to work from that side because I think it's more important that I follow the edge here and I can see how it's looking on this side. Now, it's a bit annoying that I don't have a yellow thread. Just suddenly thought that. Would that be better? I think it would, you know. After I poo-pooed that colour at the beginning. Okay, I'm going to be a bit lazy. I can't be bothered to wind the bobbin. So what I'm going to do is just, as I'm working from this side anyway, I'm just going to change the top thread and it will only show the top thread from this side. So it'll be white underneath, but this side it will be uh, this mustard colour. So I have to say it would be nice to hand stitch that hem, but when it's so narrow, I don't know how good it would look. And let's face it, I know we're on lockdown, but I don't think I've got the patience and time to do a hand sewn, a four and a half metres hand sewn hem. Okay. 
so I'm now lined, finding a point to line up and because this, I've turned up a centimetre, I want to sew it quite narrow, so about half a centimetre. I'm also going to increase that stitch length actually to three and then away I go. Um, getting my nice section. Can you see what I'm doing? It did help a bit if I turned it down, didn't I? I've also put all the dress on the table so I've not got the weight of the dress pulling and fighting against me. And I'm flattening it, even though I've pressed it, I am flattening it as well. Oh, what is that? It's not you, some random bit of thread there. And try not to let the fabric drag too much because it can pull and drag and put drag crease lines in on a circle hem. So trying to keep it flat and in that curved shape on the uh, edge of your on your hem is really important. Okay, so let's have a look at that. It, it looks like it has dragged a little bit, but actually if you press that flat, that will be absolutely fine. So I'm happy with that. Um, so all I'm gonna do now is, I don't want to take this out of the machine really, because I don't want to lose where I am and then have to do another reverse. But I'm gonna talk you through what I do with the zip. I haven't got any fabric, have I? It's annoying. Just a second, guys. I've got some in the other room. Bear with. Okay. Oh. Right, I've got some. So, I was thinking I might make, nice to make a, uh, isn't it? Oh yeah, gonna do that as well, with a little scrap. Nothing more satisfying than finding a project that's good for a scrap, is there? Uh, okay, so, where is my zip? So I'm going to cut through the zip there, which is, you can, the stitching stops about there. So about a couple of centimeters below there. And then I'm going to trim this little piece down to the width oops, of the zip. Yeah, okay, that's fine. It's a bit too long to just cut that off. And so essentially what we're gonna do with this little bit is bind it, so I can't sew it because obviously it's under the machine at the moment. But I'm gonna stitch it, if you see like that, I would stitch it across, if I put a pin in and then maybe that can help you. Can you see what I'm doing? Stitch it across there, so I've put the, oops a daisies. What am I doing? No, I've done that wrong. It's that way, sorry folks on the right side there, <laughs> stitch it across there, okay? And then I'll fold this over and I need to trim it actually, it's still too long. Fold it over and like bias binding, tuck that in like that. And then stitch, edge stitch across that folded edge there and then just trim those edges off. And then that neatly finishes the end of the zip um, and it also stops it from tickling you. Tickly is it? Nothing worse, is there? Um, okay, waffler. Ooh. Guys, that's the end of our Betty dress. I'm sorry that I'm gonna not be able to put it on for you now. We've only got about six minutes left, um, but I am gonna try and finish this now um, and try and get uh, my dad to take a photo either today or tomorrow, um, and I'll wear it as well at some point next week. So next week we have got kids sewing on Monday. We're gonna be doing felt rainbows um, and then we're gonna be doing a bit of embroidery um, and jean hemming with the um, beginners. Um, Tuesday we're doing our Ava skirt. Wednesday and Thursday it's Clara. Friday it is the Elm t-shirt. 
um, and all of those patterns that I'm referencing are all able, you're all able to download them. Um, also though, we should have our copy shop uh, machine up and running. And so um, we I don't know if we'll be able to get them posted out to, for you, but um, the full schedule anyway, guys, is a link um, in, in the description book, box and also we've popped it up. Rosie has just now. Right, guys, thank you so much for joining me today. If you want to see me tomorrow, if you haven't had enough of me, I'll be on the uh, Lisa Comfort Home uh, channel. Um, not the channel, the Instagram. If you enjoyed this video and you want to support us and buy us a coffee, then do head to the link. And thank you so much to all of those who have donated. We have been overwhelmed with how generous everyone has been. And it's really kept us positive and given us that sense of that you know to keep going and carry on doing these live so along so thank you massive thank you to rosie as well for giving up an hour of her weekend um really appreciate it rosie i hope you're gonna go and have a nice glass of wine and take it easy for the rest of the day and also thank you to mum and dad they're not watching um but thanks mum and dad for giving me your living room yet again i'll see you soon guys bye